Uh, I will talk a little bit about the details, but more about the English that you need to get the seven. Okay, so today I will be comparing maybe a six and a seven, all right, on task two, all right? So I'll be giving you some examples on what a six, what, what would a six look like and what would a seven look like. All right, cool. So let's get started. So when it comes to task response or task achievement, right? It's basically, did you do what they ask you to do? As I said before, okay? So I do think that the secret to getting a seven instead of a six or going from a seven, sorry, going from a six to a seven, okay? It is basically to explain or explore more, okay? So, uh, if suppose uh, the task you're doing is the one in which you have to discuss both views, okay? So, if you have to discuss both views, um, let's say you have V1 and V2, all right? Uh, to be a six, maybe you can mention a few things in V1, mention a few things in V2, but if you want a seven, you need to develop, explain, elaborate, okay? So that's what you should be doing with your task response, task achievement, okay, in the IELTS writing, okay? So when you think about this one, it's not really about your English, but it's a bit more about your ideas. Of course, you need your English to express your ideas, but task response is more, I think, about your writing skills. All right, cool. Then. then we move on to coherence and cohesion, okay? So to me, coherence and cohesion is a combination of your English and of course, writing skills, all right? So it's a bit of both together, okay? Um, so <clears throat> a six, all right, in coherence and cohesion would be something that flows well, but maybe when the examiner is reading your writing, it kind of gets stuck sometimes because you can't quite understand, goes back a little bit, but it still flows, all right? If you want a seven plus, the examiner should be reading, okay, your writing task and basically not stopping and being able to understand everything, all right? Because if the examiner has to stop to try to understand something, maybe is not clear, all right? Maybe is not flowing that well, maybe is not that well organized, so you're probably gonna get a lower score, all right? So that's how I uh, they see uh, coherence and cohesion, okay, and as I said before, coherence and cohesion is more of a combination of um, English and writing skills together, okay? So when I say writing skills, I'm talking about your organization and I'm talking about how it's flowing. When I say English for coherence and cohesion, I mean more related to cohesive devices, okay? Some of you have a whole life on cohesive devices, okay? So cohesive devices are the linking words, okay? So, however, even though, in addition, furthermore, those kind of words, okay? So, with my students, when they start studying for the IELTS exam, this is one of the first things we talk about because as we are noticing, okay, there's a whole section on how the examiner would check your writing, okay, that actually requires you to be using cohesive devices, linking words, connectors, all right? So that's why it's so important. Okay, of course, they talk about the overuse and the underuse of it. Okay, so you don't want to use it too much, but also you don't want to not use it at all because then you get a low score. All right, so 
I think that maybe a six would be uh, the person using it a little bit, but not too much. And the seven would be actually the person using the cohesive devices to help with the flow, okay? And also to help with what they're trying to say, all right? And again, remember there are two types of cohesive devices, cohesive devices that will connect sentences and cohesive devices that will connect clauses, all right? To get a seven plus, you need a combination of both, okay? I'm not sure when, I have to check my calendar here, but soon we will have a whole live only about linking words, okay? So if you're feeling a little bit uh, blown away right now, oh my God, I didn't know that some quiz devices you used to link, what, link sentences, the other ones to link clauses, okay? But there's a big difference between them, all right? So yeah, but... I will have a live soon about that, okay? So <laughs> pay attention, keep an eye here, all right? And we'll talk about that, okay? Yeah, so we talked about um, task response or task achievement, which is more about your writing skills. Coherence and cohesion, which is more related to um, your writing skills and, of course, your um, ability to write well, okay? And now we're going to move on to lexical resource, which is vocabulary, okay? So when it comes to vocabulary, it's all English, right? It's basically how much vocabulary do you know, okay? And how well you can use it, okay? So um, when it comes to a seven, okay, when it comes to uh, lex lexical resources, the main focus of the IELTS tasks, right? Task two. It's to be more academic. Even if you're doing the general one, okay, it tends to be whatever they expect you to do, it's more general. Sorry, it's more academic, even if you're doing the general test. Okay, so pay attention to that when you are when you are um, uh, um, writing. Okay, so what could be the difference, right? So you could have words that are quite simple and think about it. How can I make this better? Okay, so with my students, we always talk about the better words. Okay, and many times I get students who have reasonable piece of writing, not a lot of mistakes, but whatever they're choosing is not really sophisticated enough so they can get a seven, okay? So my job is to help them to make things better, okay? So yeah, so that's my advice when it comes to um, a lexical resource, okay? It's basically just thinking about better words, okay? And I can't get into exactly, I don't have a lot of examples today, for you guys, but there will be a workshop. I'll tell you about that later. We're gonna have lots of examples, okay? But um, <clears throat> yeah, so I believe that the best way uh, to start thinking about and using better words, it's probably through collocations, okay? So through collocations, okay, you don't know what a collocation is, right? Okay, some people don't know. Collocations are words that go together. All right, okay. And what makes collocations interesting is the fact that there are no rules, okay? So you basically have to learn them, okay? So do we say, do the bed or make the bed? Make the bed, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, I say, do dinner or make dinner? Oh, make dinner. You don't say, do dinner. But you say, do homework, okay? Yeah, so that kind of stuff. So if you want a six or more, okay, or a seven plus on the IELTS exam, you should be using lots of good collocations, but not using, not just using them, but using them correctly. Because a lot of times people, they do choose uh, a few words, okay, but then they can't quite, um, they can't quite uh, use it correctly. So that's the difference, right? So let's say you try to use a very nice word. I say, oh, this word is good. 
Uh, my teacher told me I should use this word and then you go and you try to use the word. Okay, but then you use it incorrectly. Maybe you can get a 6.5 because you tried, but to get the seven, you have to be using it correctly. Okay, and of course, also thinking about the um, spelling also. All right, so that's why vocabulary sometimes is not just choosing the right words. Okay, and that's what I wanted to discuss with you guys today. Okay, we can talk, um, so we'll talk more about specific words maybe in future lives. But today I wanted to bring your attention to the fact that um, it's not just using the good words, the better words, the sophisticated words, it's using them in the right place correctly and also, of course, uh, not making mistakes with the words. Okay, okay, cool. And then the last one, grammar. Okay, so I'm going to share something with you guys, okay? Uh, the, and I think this is the thing that has been stopping most people from getting a seven in writing. It's the grammar. Okay, so I've uh, helped a lot of people and I've spoken to lots of different uh, IELTS examiners and they always tell me how the amount of... Um, small grammar mistakes, how it affects um, people's overall score, okay? So uh, most of the people have been trying really hard to get the seven. Uh, they have been having problems with their grammar, okay? And uh, so most people who come to me with a 6.5 and they want a seven, the first thing we talk about is actually well, first talk about structure because <laughs> I think it's very important. And the second thing we talk about is grammar, okay? So what is the difference between a six in grammar and a seven in grammar, okay? So basically, a six in grammar, you are using the word, uh, the grammar correctly, you're making good choices, okay? But maybe your choices could be better, all right? Okay, so you're using one specific type of grammar, but the examiner reads like, oh, this person could be using the uh, this other type of grammar, but this person didn't want to make a choice, uh, make that choice, but this person chose this one and there are no mistakes. All right, so it's a six. Okay, so that's interesting how, yeah, sometimes some people, they have, uh, they, hand, they hand in a piece of writing and I give it back to them and there are not a lot of mistakes, but they still get a six and they're like, why? There are no mistakes, I'm like, yeah but you're not using more sophisticated types of grammar. And, and that also works with um, uh, vocabulary, of course, okay? And uh, so uh, you may make a choice, all right? But let's say that you kind of know that you should be uh, choosing things that are a bit more sophisticated and you do try, but you make a mistake. Then maybe you could be in between, all right? So maybe you could be getting like a 6.5 because of that, all right? So that's that. And uh, soon we'll have another live, okay? More specific about the types of grammar that will get you a uh, seven plus, okay? So to me, um, one of the most important things if you want to get a seven plus would be complex sentences. All right, so a lot of short sentences can be a problem, but then, of course, uh, really long sentences can also be a problem, <laughs> okay, so we have to find the balance here, all right, and um, uh, the best way to go would be uh, thinking about uh, complex sentences, what are complex sentences, okay, maybe we can have a live about that, let me just write this here, <laughs> so we're about complex sentences, all right, yeah, and how do they work? Compound sentences, but I think complex sentence is the, the main thing, all right? Because if you only have simple sentences, you might not even get a six, okay? But if you want a seven plus, you should definitely go with that, okay? And of course, I think that we already talked about linking words, which could be under more under uh, coherence and cohesion, but you could also think about the grammar of these words, okay, and how you're using them. So that's another thing to think about also, okay? And of course, the accuracy, as we talked about before, 
you are going to make grammar choices, okay? And uh, whether, so your grammar choice, when you make the choice, that's the first step, okay? The second step is to use it accurately. That would be the second step, okay? So then you think about it, okay, so I'm choosing this one, but how correct is it? Okay, so that's something that you should be constantly thinking about, okay? And that's why it's so important to um, do, some, do a piece of writing and then, of course, talk to other people, okay? Talk to your teachers, your tutors, get someone to look at it for you and let you know how you're doing.